Hi, and welcome back to our latest episode of Gina's Gems, where you get to meet the team behind the scenes. Today, I have John Poore joining me. He is a senior consultant out of our Philadelphia office who's here to drop some gems around captives. Hey, John, great to have you. Thanks for having me, Gina. You bet. Can you share a fun fact about yourself before we get started? I can. Uh, so I'm the proud parent of twin boys that are 19 today, but they were born at 25 weeks. They were a pound and a pound, one pound, 11, one pound, 13 ounces, spent five and a half months in the hospital. Um, a very touch and go, scary time, but they are smart, happy, healthy boys in college today. So uh, it all worked out, but that is my fun fact. I'm not sure it's that fun. And I'm I not sure. I don't feel like really that's very. <laughs> nor am I sure it's my fact. It's more theirs, but that's what we're going with. It's definitely not fun, but it's <laughs> beautiful. And I was around back the then. Happy when it ending. Happened. So I'm very, very happy to hear that they're thriving today. And I'm going to share a fun fact about you, Johnny, for anyone in the audience who cares, which is not many people, but. Johnny and I went to college together, and I'll let you guys Ten years decide ago. who's older. <laughs> Go Bullets. That's right. All right, John, let's get into it here. Um, so captives are getting more and more popular, and in my very limited experience with them, it seems that there's a lot of push and pull between risk managers and benefits leaders when it comes to this topic. So why is that, and can you shed some light on what you've seen? Push and pull is perfectly stated, Gina. Um, I've been in the benefit business for 30 years, 25 of it working pretty exclusively with HR. The last five working with both HR and risk managers. And risk managers love the idea of benefits in a captive. When I talk to my HR folks, there's a little bit of trepidation. There's a little bit, maybe a knowledge gap. Maybe they don't really understand. I get sort of what a captive is, but I don't really understand how it's gonna benefit me or my employees, how it really benefits the organization. And is there, and an additional risk that comes along with it. So I think there is a knowledge gap and, and what, it's what we want to talk about today. Yeah, so maybe we take a step back and in simplest terms, can you define what a captive is? Sure, uh, in simplest terms, it's most traditionally used in property and casualty. So let's say an employer had a fire or a flood risk that they couldn't get insurance for. What they would do is they could theoretically put money aside on a monthly basis to, to, to deal with a, a, an impending risk. But what they came up with is, why don't we start our own insurance company? So instead of putting money aside, every month I can pay premium to this insurance company. And at the end of the year, if there's a, a profit, you know, claims don't um, match what the premium is, the employer gets to keep that surplus. On top of that, they get to tailor the policy to exactly what they want. And then there's also some tax uh, advantages to being uh, in a captive also and owning your own insurance company. So it's really the underwriting profit, the um, tailoring the policy and getting a policy where you maybe couldn't get one before, and then also some tax advantages. So you mentioned before that typically in captives, we see property and casualty lines, cyber, et cetera. So what about employee benefits? Yep. Most traditionally, it's used globally for benefits around the world. Employers will oftentimes pull them and put them in a captive. Um, domestically in the United States, um, stop loss is very popular. So a lot of employers will put stop loss in a captive. Some will put life and disability, but less with life, life and disability. And then over the last handful of years, employee paid coverage, so voluntary benefits have been very popular within captives. Now, are there certain carriers that are mandated for captives? There's not. They can really work with any carrier. So let's say they work with MetLife or Aflac or whoever the carrier might be. What they will do is, is the employees, when they call customer service, are still calling the, the, that, that MetLife or Aflac, that carrier. Um, HR is still dealing with the carrier. They're still getting customer service from the carrier. They're paying the carrier every month. Where the captive comes in is quarterly and annually behind the scenes, there's a, an a, a accounting, accounting of, of the claims versus premium and any sort of surplus. Because when there's a surplus, that goes back to the employer's captive. So it doesn't really affect HR as much, but it does, and it doesn't affect the employees, but there's really a benefit to the employer through that um, accounting behind the scenes. Got it. So last question for you. Are there some success stories that you can share? I'd love to hear what you and your team have done when you've got employers that are evaluating utilizing a captive. Sure. I've got a couple for you. I've got one on stop loss and one on uh, voluntary benefits. So the stop loss one, um, at, at MMA, we own our own stop-loss captive. So there's two different types of captives. There's what's called a single parent captive, 
me as an employer, I own my own captive. I set it up. I own my own, ins own insurance company, single parent captive. If I'm an employer that's a little smaller, let's say under 2,000 employees, they will oftentimes go into what's called a group captive. Think of it as like a pool. So our stop loss captive is a, is a group captive. So this employer is a food product supplier, about 500 employees. They've been with our stop loss captive since 2015. And they've been able um, through uh, good experience to uh, save $1.6 million, almost $1.7 million since 2015 in our captive. And they've received $550,000 in surplus from that captive. Wow. Um, secondly, we have um, our Benecap product, which is Benecap is voluntary employee paid benefits in a captive. So this is a 5,000 employee, employee uh, company. They already had a couple of these voluntary benefits, the accident, the critical illness. And what you'll find a lot with those voluntary benefits is they oftentimes, while employees like them and they enroll in them, they oftentimes have low loss ratios. It's not uncommon to see a 20, 30% loss ratio, meaning 70% of the profit goes to the insurance company. So in this situation, um, this employer had uh, about 30 to 40% loss ratio. We re-underwrote the case. We increased the benefit levels. So, so um, made the benefits more lucrative for the employees. We reduced the cost to the employee. And at the end, the employer still had $147,000 surplus or net income from the captive from these lines. And that money would then go back to enhance the uh, health and welfare plans for the employees. Awesome. These are both really compelling stories. I, I love this topic. So I really appreciate you uh, sharing your insights and enlightening information on the topic of captives. Hope to any of you watching that you took away some great information on this topic and hope you'll tune back again in another two weeks for our next episode. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Gina. Bye-bye.